Hi, I'm Alyssa Malaspina. I'm the school librarian at South Orange Middle School in South Orange, New Jersey. And I'm going to talk to you a little today about some of the tools that I use to break down the classroom walls and to sort of bring our school to globally. And we use lots of tools. And the newest tool we have here is a Chromebook. And that we have 95 of them for our students and we're running pilot one-to-one -one programs. And that has really changed the way that we are teaching our students because we are able to access all of these cool tools that allow our kids to connect globally. The biggest tool that we use is probably Edmodo. And Edmodo is really a, basically a safe social networking site for students where whatever you do, the, te the kids can see. It looks a lot like Facebook, so because of that, you know, the kids sort of know what it looks like, but the teachers have the ability to give tests and quizzes and to have a like wall where they can post information on and there's poll feature. These are all these really cool features that allow us to connect with not only ourselves, but with other teachers. Because one of the great things about Edmodo is there's over 25 million users on it from around the world. So you can connect with different classes and with different students and with different people. So they have communities that are about different things. So there's a community that's about, you know, computer technology. There's a com community about PE and health. There's a community about almost every subject. And you can connect with other teachers and learn from them and grow from them and expand your personal learning network. And Emoto is a great way to do that. And why our st we use it with our students is because we have a way that we can connect with them and their parents 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's an amazing tool that we use. The other great tool that we use a lot is Google Hangouts. If you've not done a Google Hangout, it's an amazing way to connect with educators um, and other people. We use it a lot to connect classes together from different parts of the country or different parts of the world. Um, we've taken it at South Orange Middle School. We've done some innovative things and sort of taking it to the next level. We did a four school virtual debate that was between four, two schools in Pennsylvania and two schools in New Jersey. And what we did is we used Edmodo for the kids to connect with each other. And then we, they debated though, virtually via Google Hangout. And we had a set of judges on the Google Hangout watching it. So everybody could be together in one place and watching it. And what's nice about Google Hangout is it connects to YouTube. So it goes live if you want it to. And so we had people from around the country watching it live occur. We also did sort of the similar thing with a poetry summit that we did where we had people from around the US coming in together, classes from around the US and Canada they came in and they spoke and we talked and um, we did like a two hour big summit with authors and poets and students and people were able to watch it from around the world. That's another great tool. I mean, there's also Twitter is an amazing tool that I use to connect and, you know, get my personal learning network. And I've met a lot of people that way and really expanded my learning and you know, there's many other tools, but the ones at South Orange Middle that we use a lot are really in Modo and Google Hangout and Twitter. So to get more information about some of the things that I do, the best way to do that is to go to my website. My website is www.alissamalaspina.com. And I'll spell that for you because nobody can spell my name. It's www.elissa. M A L E S P as in Peter, I N A dot com. And on my website, you'll see a whole area that says presentations. And if you look through that, you'll see presentations that I give at different conferences or that I give to people. And I put a lot of resources there for you, for you guys to use. And as a librarian, I'm all about gathering resources. So, um, I have one on Edmodo and you can go in there and you can see there's a video we made um, about our, how our students at South Orange Middle School use Edmodo. We have an ebook that we used when we were, Miss Butler and I, who's a teacher that I collaborate a lot with, 
we did Edmodocon. So we made, which was a global conference about Edmodo. And we made up an ebook that you can download that tells you all about the resources that we spoke about and gives you resources and information about Edmodo and how we use it at South Orange Middle School and also how you can use it to flatten your classroom. So we have a lot of information there. We have a live binder filled with all different information about Edmodo. We even have a scavenger hunt for you that if you are a teacher and wanting to ed implement Edmodo into your classroom, you can use that scavenger hunt as a good way to get your kids started in introduction into it. We, um, there's a lot of information there on Edmodo. I have one, a whole section on Google Hangouts and ways that I've used Google Hangouts in the classroom and some examples of it that you can use. And I have a lot of other tools for you too. I also do a presentation on Twitter. So I have a presentation on sort of how to use Twitter in your classroom or to connect and to become a global learner. I talk in there about the idea of hashtags and that you can follow different hashtags. So if there's something you're interested in, you can follow a hashtag. Like if you were to go at the end of whatever you're writing and you were to hashtag it with EdChat, it would then lead to a huge group of people who ever wants to search that hashtag hashtag would then get to see it and you can get responses from people. Um, you know, I belong to like two, I co-moderate two um, Twitter chats during the week and one of them is called NJ Ed Chat, which is for just, well, it's New Jersey educators, but anyone can join. And so at Tuesday nights at 8.30, a group of educators get together and they start a discussion. And but everything ends or has the hashtag NJED in it. So that's how we all can follow each other and discuss the uh, topic. Another one that I'm a part of is called PT Chat. And that's parents and teachers chatting together. And so we have a diverse group of moderators from around the US and world that come together to discuss different topics related to teachers and to parents. And that happens at Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And if you want, you can search the hashtag and follow along with what's been discussed or join in the conversation live at that time. So Twitter is an amazing way to communicate with other people, too, and to learn about different topics. And I've included a lot of that in the research and on my website for you so that you can get a better understanding of all of those. So go to my website, search around, feel free to contact me, tweet me at SOMS Library, which is my Twitter account, and I'll write back to you. And you know, if you have any questions, you can contact me on my email, and I'm always available because I love to work with people and help you learn. Well, I'm back because Bob and I started talking and we started getting on the topic of augmented reality. And we realized that you guys probably don't know what augmented reality is, or if you do, how to use it in the classroom. It's really a new field. It's the wave of the future. It's really what you're going to see. You're, you see Google Glasses running around now and people starting to get Google Glasses. And what's going to happen is augmented reality is really how education is going to start to come about. And you can do it now with your classes. There is an app called Erasma, and with the Erasma app, and it's free, you can download it to your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device, and with it, you can make augmented reality for yourself and your students, or you can see augmented reality that is out there that people have already made. I'm going to plug my website again just because there are great detailed instructions on my website that I don't want, you know, don't need to get into now that'll tell you exactly how to go about doing this. My students, my sixth grade students make augmented reality and use Erasma in their classrooms and they put together a nice little dis discussion on how to do it in a slideshow. So if you go to my website, which is www.alissamalaspina.com, and you go to the presentations, and you go to the augmented reality section, you'll see an amazing presentation that tells you how to use the studio version of Erasma. With Erasma, you can make augmented reality just using your phone. 
But what happens is just by doing it on the app, only if you're using your phone will people be able to see that. But if you use the studio account, which you can apply for using Erasma, then anybody can see it that follows your channel. And following a channel is just like you follow somebody on Facebook or you follow somebody on Instagram or Twitter or something. You'd follow somebody on Erasma. And when you follow them on Erasma, when you scan something, and it could be, you know, scanning this Chromebook or this book behind me, and when you scan it, the cover of it, something's going to happen. We use it a lot in the library. We use it a lot of different ways in our school. And I'm experimenting with it. And things are going to change and they're going to grow. And so we have a different ways that we use it. We have students take books and then they do projects. They do a big author study where they learn about the author and they make a video about the author. And what I do is I take one of the books from the author and I make it so that when you scan the book, you see the video that the child made and it comes to life. It pops up from the screen and you can be anywhere in the world and scan that book cover. And if you're following my channel, it will pop up and you will see it, which is different than QR codes because with a QR code, which is really cool and I love them, you can only be in that one spot. You can only use that one QR code. But with augmented reality, you can be anywhere. And if you have your iPhone or your iPad or the app and you scan the picture, it's going to come to life. So we use it that way. We use it also as a tour in our school. So what I did last year is I had my eighth graders make videos about different parts of the school, like the cafeteria and the gym and talking about it. And then my sixth graders went around and they used the iPads. And when they got to a specific image, when they took, when they scanned it, up came, popped the eighth grader talking about, this is the cafeteria. In the cafeteria, you do this. So we made the little tour that they take at the beginning of the year more interactive. We, there are so many ways to use Erasmus. These are two that I'm using, but there are so many people out there that are using it in really cool ways. One way that I heard about it that I just thought was amazing is there's a special ed teacher who has very low level students and they don't even know how to zip their jackets or to wash their hands. So what they've done is they've taken a picture of the sink and when the kid goes to the sink with the iPad, he sees a video of how to wash his hands. And so that way it helps the kid realize, oh, when I go to the sink, I do this. And he can always, where, whenever he's by a sink, see that picture and know to do that. And it helps them to understand. And the same with like zipping a jacket. When you take a picture of the zipper, you see how to zip the jacket. So then the kid could be anywhere and scan that and they'll see, oh yeah, here's how I zip my jacket or tie my shoes. The way augmented reality is going to really change how you can do education. I'm experimenting it with it now in the schools and we have some really cool concepts of ways that we're thinking of using it in the classroom. I blog about it on my website. So as you like, as I do something and try something, I will, I blog about it and then you can read it and see what fails and what doesn't fail um, and how it works. But start to look into Erasma. And another really cool tool, too, is this thing called Color Mix. Color Mix is, and it's C-O-L-A-R, Mix, is another app that you can download that makes uh, coloring pages come to life. We used it with our students for Dot Day. And the dots that come across and come to life are amazing. And you can download it. It's free and you get free coloring pages, and then when they scan the coloring pages, stuff comes to life with them. And I don't care if the kid is three or the person is 99, when you show them this coming to life with this app, the, everybody's like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. So be willing to take that risk and try something new. And as I always tell my students, it may fail, and I fail all the time with Erasmus, 
but it's cool and it's fun and it's amazing and there's some really great people out there that are using it and that you can learn from. So follow me on Twitter. I'll connect you with some other people who are using it and there's this community of educators that is growing that is really learning about how to use augmented reality in the classroom and how it's going to change the way we do things.